Okay, so this video is on how to thread a Foff Hobby Lock 794. First thing to do is make sure that you have two new needles in it. Um, the needles are changed out using a 1.5 millimeter um, uh, screwdriver. The right needle is used on that screw and the left needle is used on this one. Make sure they're all, all the way pushed up and oriented correctly. And these use a style, this is the kind of needle that you use. It's a DBX1. Uh, you can use an 8012 or a 9014. These needles are round. The shank of the needle is round. So there's no flat side on it. And the front of the needle has a groove, a long groove going down the front of the needle. And the back of the needle has this cutout in it called the scarf. So make sure when you put the needles in that it's oriented this way with the eye of the needle facing forward, the groove in the front, and the scarf in the back. So make sure you have two brand new needles in there. And so threading is pretty easy. And I apologize right now for the quality of this video, but I just am not set up to do this. So uh, first of all, use maxi lock thread wherever possible. Uh, that will give you the best results. A lot of cone thread is pretty poor. Maxi lock is pretty good. So first of all, make sure that the thread is not wrapped around the bottom of the spool, that it comes off easily, and that the spool holder is directly above the, knee, uh, the uh, spool. So you don't want it. You want it so it's straight above and not oriented turned around the other direction so when you put the thread in whoops uh, first of all take the thread and you slip it between this little spring and the hook on the round the back and it goes through like that I've already done all the other ones um, but this one just grab it on either side of the thread and just hook it in there like that then the thread goes underneath the handle. The handle, um, you have to lift the handle up in order to get the threads through. And you pull the threads from, from the other side through. Um, and then, very important, make sure that the thread goes into the disc. Right now, the thread is just sitting on top of the disc, and it's not going to work. So, um, I'll see if I can do this. Um, Grab the thread from the back and hold on to it and grab the thread from the front and like dental floss, make sure that it pulls in and do that on each subsequent thread tensioner. If it's just riding on the, on the thing on the outside, you'll have huge loops on the back side. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, thread all four of those through. Um, see if you can see this. So I've got, they're all through, and then I'm going to pull each one through underneath the handle. So they're all coming through. And then I'm going to uh, move this up so you can see it. Um, I'm gonna make sure that the thread goes in the tension discs. It's really important on the needles because the lead needles have tighter tension. So make sure that it snaps all the way in there like that. So now I've got all four threads hanging there. Now you always thread on a serger one, two, three, four. Always do your loopers before the needles. If for some reason the machine comes unthreaded, you have to, you can leave the whole thing threaded on the needles, but you have to clip the, the needles threads above the eye of the needle. They can't be threaded when you're doing loopers, otherwise it won't tangle properly. So the next step here is, uh, pardon my movement here, is we need to, to thread the lower part. So I'm gonna open up the door and I'm gonna start with this red tensioner here and it goes um, straight down. There's a little guide inside of here and just hook it on there. And then there's a, there's a thread guide here and you just push it over the top and it will go in. 
And there's a thread chart on the front, and if you watch it, if you look at it carefully, you'll see how it goes. Um, the thread of the red thread, the upper looper, and the yellow and the orange thread on the lower looper both go through this particular guide, this particular guide, and this one. So one, two, three. It shares three guides, and those guides move. They, they slightly move, so the direction that you go is important. So one little trick that I've learned with, with sergers is you can take the thread and just give it a little twist like that, and when it doubles over, it gets kind of stiff, and it makes it easier to thread. And I use really good quality bent tweezers, and I can really uh, grab it and hold on to it well. And you, I always grab the, um, the thread about a centimeter um, from the edge because it makes it stiff. If you hold it out, you know, really long like this, it's so floppy, it's hard to get it in. So, so hold it back there. Now, the first thing you do is you go, the red thread that we're dealing with, this one here, it goes through the back of the first uh, thread guide. So you push it through and then pull it through. So the next one is the lower looper guide here, and it goes from right to left. So you have to get it in a position. You can go up and out, or you can go right to left and out. Um, whatever works for you. I'm going to uh, grab the thread with my tweezers, and I'm going to angle it in such a way that I can get in there. And I'm just going to push it from the, from the right to the left, and then carefully let go so I don't touch it. And then I can just come on the other side and pull it out. And I can do the same with this other guide. I'm going to go from right to left, and I'm just going to pull it through like that. So now we have the thread going through those three guides. The final place for this is through the upper looper itself. And it has to go from the bottom out through the top. So I'm going to grab the thread, give it a little twist so it's stiff. And then I'm going to push it from the bottom of the looper. You can't even see the hole, just know it's there. And you have to angle this in such a way with your thread that it points in the right direction. And it's going to pass um, up from the bottom, through, and, and push it again. Keep pushing a little bit at a time until it protrudes, pokes out through this hole up here. And then you can pull it through. Okay, then give your thread another little twist there and go from the front of the looper out of the back. So the tip of the looper goes through like that. Hope you can see that. I'm kind of hooked up there. And then pull it through like this. And pull it, whoops, it flipped over. So now it goes from the top, through this guide, through this one, through the back, through the back, through the back. And then once you've got this, there's one little hiding guide back here. And I'm not even sure you can see it from that angle, but it's, it's a little guide that I do last. It's this one here. Um, it's just a little curlicue. And so you take the thread and just hook it around like that. Now the thread for the upper looper is completely threaded. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the lower looper, which is the yellow thread, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to hook it around there, then I'm going to push it from down. Whoops, you can't even see. I got in the way there. So I'm just going to put the thread over the top like that. Then I'm going to give it a little twist, make it stiff. I'm going to poke it through the top and then grab it like that. I'm going to go from right to left on the bottom guide. And I just poke it through about a centimeter and pull it out. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one as long as I don't get it all tangled up. Oops. So now it's going through here, 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 and here. And everything's good. Now this one is interesting because it's the lower looper. Whoops, I was out of, a, out, of, out of the picture there. So that's where we have it threaded. Now, 
this lower looper, it goes back and forth like this. And there's a guide here that you can't, you probably can barely see, and there's a hole right there. Um, so we're gonna have to get the thread through the hole right there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna give it a little twist so it's stiff. I'm gonna grab it at it, this time kind of holding it so it pokes forward. And I'm gonna poke it through. And I support the, um, the thing with my finger just to give me a little stability. I'm gonna poke it through and then you can pull it. And you have to kind of pull it through the other side like this. And this is uh, another tricky part of this uh, machine is the, the lower looper. So we've got the thread coming through. The lower looper, you see it coming through here. Um, let's see if I can get this um, set in here in such a way that you can see it. Um, let me tilt this up a little bit. That ought to do the trick. Maybe. Yeah, so you can see the, the lower looper comes and then it goes forward and then it comes back. Now this is the part where you need a sharp pair of scissors and a little bit of patience and a steady hand. So the thread comes from that guide that we just did. And what you wanna do is take a nice pair of scissors and clip the thread about eight inches or so back. Okay, so now I've got a nice, crisp, blunt edge on the end of my thread. And on the end of this looper, if you look carefully, there's a hole right there where my tweezers are. And you've got to take this thread and poke it in that hole about an inch. So hold the thread in such a way that you can get right up against that hole and push the thread in as far as you can. Then carefully let go, go back, push a little bit more, go back, push a little bit more. And it doesn't hurt to get about an inch or two. You can just keep pushing if you want. And here's where you need to be really careful that this loop that's, that's sitting here, this loop of thread, if it hooks around this knob or if it gets stuck on something, when you rotate the hand wheel, it's gonna pull out. So then we're gonna come along to this side of the machine and we're going to turn the hand wheel in the sewing direction, which is counterclockwise as you look at it. We're gonna go this way. And I'm gonna turn the hand wheel so that the lower looper comes forward. You'll see it's coming forward, 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 forward like this. And you'll see right here is that little piece of thread that, we, that I stuffed through that back hole. So here it is, and it's coming through. Now, this looper here has a groove in it and then another hole in the end, very much like the other looper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the thread, again, about a centimeter of thread, and I'm gonna poke it through this hole, and then I'm gonna very easily reach around the back and pull it through like that. So now the upper, loo the lower looper is threaded from the back hole, it comes along this groove and out of the back. And then I'm gonna take the thread and just kind of pull it to the back here where the other one was. Now, it's really important at this stage before we thread the needles that you rotate the hand wheel because you'll see that this thread is going to go over this looper and it's gonna get stuck in there. So we wanna make a full rotation so that the thread flips over that upper looper and now it goes like that. So we're going to, um, now the two loopers are crossing each other like this and that's what we want. So the next thing is the needles. The needles are pretty simple, much simpler than the rest. Um, 
one thing to bear in mind is when the needle's in their, in their upper position, when they've completely raised up, at some point, the upper looper goes in front of the needles like this, and then the, the needles go down. We don't want those loopers, the looper to be in the way of those needles to thread them. So turn the hand wheel until the needles go up, up, up like this. And just before the upper looper gets in the way, that's the position that we want to thread the needles. So we have the right needle is here and the left needle is over on the left side. So we'll start with the right needle to thread it. And we're going to, whoa, I'm knocked my camera down. Told you I'm no pro at this. So we take the thread from uh, the tensioner and you just pass it under the green. There's a little guide there. And then we wanna take the thread and go behind this little wire. There's a little wire and a little plate. So that plate has a spring on it and that holds the thread from coming out. So we just hook it behind that, um, that uh, wire and then put it behind the wire and the plate. Give yourself a little slack. And again, a nice pair of sharp scissors. And then again, grab your thread with about a centimeter and go from the front to the back and thread that needle. Poke it through just a little bit and then very carefully go behind and pull it through. And now the, the right needle is threaded. And we're gonna do the same thing. Oh gosh, you couldn't even see that. I'm gonna move it around a little bit. Left needle, we're gonna go bink through that little guide. We're gonna go through the blue guide here. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hook the thread behind the wire and behind the little plate with the spring. Pull it to taut. A uh, nice cut with a sharp pair of scissors. We're gonna take the thread from the needle, I mean from the uh, tweezers. Poke it from the front to the back of the needle. Carefully reach behind, pull it through, pass it over to my other hand. Now this one's threaded. So all four th needles are threaded, but they're just going straight to the back of uh, the serger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close uh, the side of the machine. I'm gonna close the front of the machine. I'm going to lift up the presser foot and I'm gonna take all four of these threads I'll have to pull that open so you can see. And I'm going to pass them under the foot so that they go just roughly in the same area off to the side like that. But make sure that they're under the foot. And another thing about these uh, machines uh, as a side, so now everything's threaded. It should work. Um, always make sure that your tensions are on normal. If, they're, if it doesn't stitch well, there's a variety of reasons for that. Could be the uh, a poor quality thread, it could be bent needle, it could be uh, that it's adjusted improperly or that there's some kind of another issue, or um, I'm going to pop this foot off um, and take the foot. Um, with this machine, the needle plate here, this needle plate um, that screws on with the two screws, it's got two pins. They look like little needles. And they are the stitch forming fingers. And it's really important that both of those are intact. If they're not intact, the machine is not going to work. So um, you can see those two little pins. The, 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 need, the threads, the needles actually go from side to side uh, through those, uh, on each side of those pins. So I'm going to make sure that the threads aren't going to get hooked on this foot as I place it in. I'm going to set it down lower the foot down, and I'm gonna pass the threads through there. And now I can lower the foot, and when I stitch it, it should stitch, it should stitch beautifully. If it doesn't, it's gonna to have to have it repaired. So I hope that helps. 
uh, to give you an idea of uh, how the 794 uh, FOF Hobby Lock. Other FOF Hobby Locks do very similarly, or a lot of different sergers work the same way, but um, they might have different guides and things like that. But the fundamentals are pretty much the same on most sergers. Always thread one, two, three, four, use maxi lock thread, use brand new needles. Don't use old bent needles. When you have an old needle or a bent needle, throw it away. Don't put it back in your sewing kit. It's just gonna create huge problems. Um, let's see, uh, that's about it. I hope it helps.